In the next uh, few tutorials, I'm going to go over different ways to get depth of field out of Maya, either directly or through compositing and After Effects. So in this first video, we're going to look at how to set up depth of field uh, with the attribute that is built into every Maya camera. So we've got a simple scene here, um, sort of looking a little bit like a neuron, but just the idea with something central and then other parts of it that are either coming towards the camera with the dendrite or axon here uh, and parts that are going away from the camera and ones that are sort of running parallel or across the field of view. So um, depth of field uh, as I'm sure you know is um, a way to set the focal point, so the area of the image that will be in uh, perfect focus or acceptable clarity. And then some areas uh, of the scene that are either farther away in depth or closer in depth will uh, go away from that level of perfect clarity uh, into a blur. So if we look at the camera, so I just have a shot cam set up here name this shot cam. I'm just going to lock it down so I don't move it by accident. But if we open the attribute editor for this, we can see that under all the typical settings down here, there's a depth of field um, button. So if I turn that on, uh, it may by default turn on depth of field in your on your screen and you might want to turn that off because it uh, lowers performance uh, depending on what your machine setup is like. But if we look here uh, you can see that under depth of field there's a focus distance, an f-stop setting, and then a focus region scale. I think I've changed mine from the default. But the focus distance is the distance from the camera that you want to, uh, the objects that are a certain distance from the camera you want to have in focus. So uh, if I select this object, it tells me that the distance from the camera is 28 units. And that's the center, the pivot point of the object. So obviously parts of this are closer, parts of it are farther away, but the central part here, if I just hit W, you can see uh, that's the, if I actually go and click on um, my custom and center pivot. You can see that's where the pivot actually is, the center of the object. And that's 26 or 28 units away. Um, to see that, you can go under display, heads up display, and turn on object details. Okay, so if that is um, the object that you want to have in focus, you can type that value in there. So I can type 28. Now the f-stop indicates on a real camera how wide the aperture opens when you take a picture. So if it opens wider, you it lets in more light. If it's smaller, it lets in less light. Um, and so the smaller the f-stop, the bigger the aperture. And the bigger the aperture, the tighter the depth of field. So that means if it's a small number here, only a small section around this object 28 units away will be in focus and then it will quickly go into an out of focus region. Higher the number, so something like 22, will have a smaller aperture and that means the uh, depth of field region will be wider. So more of it will be in focus around that central point of clarity at 28 units away in this case. And then this focus region scale uh, does just that. It either widens it or shrinks it depending on what you put in here. So let's do a couple of renders. So I've got the focus distance at 28. F-stop is set to 22. So we should have a very wide depth of field. So this you'll see does add quite a bit of render time to any type of render that you do. So we can see the distant uh, extent of the uh, model here is not very blurred out and that's because we've got such a, a long or a, a narrow f-stop which means we've got a very wide depth of field. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's save this image. So you can see, maybe you can see that this part is a little bit blurred out. It's a little bit blurry over here. Let's just turn off depth of field so we can compare. So that took 40 seconds to render. Render this again with depth of field turned off and you'll see it should be snappier. I've got the quality settings turned up quite high as well. So this is with no depth of field, took less than half the time. We save this image and then we can compare the two. So this is no depth of field. If you just pay attention to this area here, oops. this area down here, so depth of field, no depth of field. So now if we turn on depth of field again and change the f-stop to something much lower like 5.6, those are actual numbers that you typically see on cameras 22, 11, 5.6, I think 2.2, but you can use any number uh, that you want to exaggerate or, or make this, the effect more subtle. So that's at 5.6, so let's render that. Again, this will take longer. So we can already see back here that the blur is much stronger in this distant element here. And when you have uh, something with a small f-stop, which means big aperture and a tight depth of field, it helps to make something look more miniature. Um, when you're doing macro photography or using a wide open aperture and you have a very tight depth of field. So it's a it's an effect to communicate the idea of something being small. So here that was 38 seconds and you can see it's blurred out here. It's a little bit grainy. It's blurred out here. You can compare the, the renders. So no depth of field, 5.6. Now obviously one of the limitations here is that if you are rendering out different render layers, um, so this is render layers, so something like a separate ambient occlusion render layer, uh, you have to do the blur on all the layers. So that boosts your render time uh, and it will multiply that um, increase of render time for every by every render layer that you have. Now if you're using a Mila material and you use render passes, uh, then this will be incorporated into all the passes. So it should just work. So that's one way to do it. And again, if you want to get rid of this, if you want to increase the quality here, it's a matter of turning up the, the scene quality, the, over, oh, the overall quality here. However, uh, there is a better option for doing the rendered in depth of field, and I'll show that in the next video.